Welcome to the Sam Fox Shop series of videos. Today we're going to talk about the saw stop industrial cabinet saw, its use, technique, and how to keep safe while working in the shop. If you look below the surface of the table, on the left hand side we have the on off switch which feeds power to the saw. Once the saw turns on in the morning, it'll flash green and red, green and red, which indicates that the saw is going through a pre-check to confirm that the safety mechanism will work. When it's solid green, that means the saw is ready to operate. To turn the saw on, pull the paddle switch out. This engages the blade. To turn it off, press the paddle switch in. You can also hit this switch with your knee to stop the saw. Let's look at some of the safety features. This saw has a riving knife, which is a splitter that sits behind the blade. It holds the space in the board, keeping the board from pinching as we pass it through the blade. This should always be installed when you're working with a saw. These are anti-kickback paws. They help prevent boards from being ejected back at the user. This dust collection shroud removes dust from the cut site and it also reminds us to keep our fingers away from the blade. Remember, the red phenolic insert represents the no-touch zone. Keep your fingers clear of this space at all times. Uh, if you are to cut on this saw and uh, you accidentally uh, nick your finger, this saw has a safety mechanism in it that will drop the blade into a block of aluminum instantaneously. It makes a very loud bang. Um, it will wreck the blade. It will wreck the cartridge that uh, catches that blade, but it will keep you from actually losing a finger. Whenever you're using this saw, you want to be extra careful to make sure that you don't use uh, wood that's got any metal in it because that can set off the cartridge. So no nails, screws, staples, um, no staples in the end of your lumber. Make sure all of that is removed before using the saw. Um, you also want to make sure that you don't use wet wood. Nothing that's been rained on can also um, set this cartridge off. And um, you want to be aware of any sort of aluminum tape uh, anything conductive can set the, the saw stop cartridge off. Um, so just look over your material very carefully before you start using the saw. So I brought you to my own studio to show you a different kind of table saw. This is a Delta Unisaw. It's got a lot of the same operating principles as the table saws at school. We've got a fence, on off switch, a uh, dial to turn the, uh, change the height of the blade, and a dial to change the pitch of the blade. Everything about this saw is the same. We even use push sticks except for the fact that this saw does not have the saw stop safety feature. So if you were to make a mistake and touch or make contact with this blade, it will do a lot more damage uh, than the saw stop at school. So you wanna be very thoughtful uh, whenever you're using a table saw and understand the unique features inherent to each saw so that you can be thoughtful and cautious and safe no matter what. So whenever you're using a table saw, be sure to confirm that the rail on the side is accurate to the blade. So in this case, we can see that the rail and the fence are accurate to the blade. Uh, the distance of, uh, between the blade and the fence is the width of my cut. That width is set over here on the track. So if I lift up the handle, slide onto my mark, and lock it down, this five inch mark tells me that I am five, five inches from the edge of the fence to the edge of the blade. If you take this fence and lift the handle and pull it off, it can be moved to this side and used in this orientation, in which case we would use the uh, marker on the left side of the saw blade. So when the saw fence is on the left side of the blade, use the left marker, but 99.9% .9 of the time, we will be on the right side of the blade and you will be using the right indicator. We can see some of the ways to adjust the saw. So if I loosen this lock and I crank the wheel, I can raise or lower the blade. Up and down, once I get it set appropriately, I'm gonna tighten this lock. If I don't tighten the lock, as I'm cutting, the blade will slowly drift down into the table. So make sure that you've got the lock tightened. Whenever you're done with the saw, be sure to crank it back to zero, return it to 90 degrees. All tools should be returned to zero uh, before they're put away for the end of the day. So when we're setting our uh, blade height to make a cut, we want three full teeth of the blade uh, raising up through the material. So a full tooth is from the top of the little carbide tip of the tooth to the bottom of this little U-shape. The U-shape is called the gullet. So if I set my material here, I should have three full teeth visible. So I can see the top of the tooth and I can see the bottom of the gullet on each of them. If I'm cutting a board that's thinner, I'm going to need to make an adjustment. So I have more than three full teeth visible. I'm going to loosen the lock. I'm going to crank the blade down. 
and now I've got it set appropriately for this cut. So I'm going to use this piece of paper as an example. So if we think about the ways we learned to fold paper in elementary school, uh, there were two ways. There was uh, hamburger style, which is this way. And then there's also hot dog style, which is this way. Looks like a hot dog bun. This saw is good for making hot dog style cuts. The longest edge of the board is going to be pressed against the fence. This saw is not safe for making hamburger style cuts because if I'm pushing this board that is wider than it is long along this fence, there's not a lot of support surface area contact and that board can twist or can't and cause it to be thrown and ejected back at me. So when I'm using this saw, if I were to cut this board for example, this is a safe cut to make using the longest side of the board against this long fence. This is an unsafe cut to make in this configuration because this is a very, very small reference surface and this is now becoming a big lever that I can ever so slightly make a miscalculation and have the board be ejected back at me. Uh, so my first cut here, I'm going to uh, just rip this along the length. I'm gonna confirm that my blade height is correct, which it is. I've got three full teeth above the material. Close this, put on my hearing protection. I've already got my safety glasses on. When I'm making my cut, I want to make sure that I have a push stick close at hand. This is a sacrificial uh, piece of wood that's going to help me push uh, past the blade and keep my fingers out of the way. I'm standing with my body to the left side of the board. This front hand is pushing down on the board and against the fence. So I'm capturing this piece of material, pushing it against the fence and down. And then my back hand is being used to advance the material. I'm sliding it forward, buzz, 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 cut, cut, cut. When I get to this point, I'm gonna bring my body closer to the saw. I'm gonna pause, hold the material down with my finger, go to the push stick, guide all the way through, and make sure that I uh, push well past the blade as I'm making the cut. So this piece of material does not need to be pushed all the way through the saw. Um, I can wait until the saw stops. I'm not concerned about this getting all the way through. What I am concerned about is making sure that this board is pushed all the way through the saw. As I'm cutting, I'm sorry, the blade is spinning this direction. If I were to let go of the board, it can be ejected back at me. That's an incredibly dangerous scenario because these, these uh, kickbacks as they're caused are called happen very, very quickly. So I want to make sure that I'm always holding on to the piece that is between the blade and the fence. That's where the tension's built up. That's where the danger is. I want to make sure that I'm always keeping my hand or a push stick on this board so that it cannot be ejected back at me. Um, that is another reason why you want to never walk behind somebody using a table saw, uh, because if they make a mistake, you don't want to uh, be on the receiving end of that board coming through the saw. Let's go ahead and make a tighter cut. Um, this time I'd like to make a cut that is really, really close and very, very tight. And um, it's going to call for me to remove the, um, the guard and the uh, insert to make the cut. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lift on this tab. I'm going to pull this plate out. I'm going to flip the kickback paws up and lock them in. On the other side, there's a lever down here inside of the saw housing. I'm going to lift that gray lever up, and I'm going to pull out the entire riving knife assembly. With each of your saws in the Sam Fox School, you should have a riving knife that is uh, standalone. So I'm going to insert that, and I'm going to lock that lever back down. And then holding this plate like this, I'm going to slide these little uh, tabs under the head of the screws and lock it back down. I want to make sure that my tabletop is completely flat and flush. Um, if you end up with this inserted incorrectly, it can make a really um, weird cut. So now I'm able to slide the fence over and make a far tighter cut than I could have before. Never, ever, ever put the blade directly against the fence. Uh, it will damage the fence, as you see has been done here. And it I've got my saw set. I've got my blade uh, the appropriate height. And it is absolutely essential that we have a push stick for this operation. I'm going to use this. Uh, thinner push stick for this um, because I'm going to need to push through and support that thin piece of material the whole time as it passes through the blade. 
So now on this piece of material, I'd like to demonstrate an angled cut. So we're gonna cut this uh, at say a 35 degree. So this would be useful if I was making a, a cleat or I just needed an angled cut. So let's come down here and make the adjustment. I'm gonna loosen the lock and I'm gonna begin to crank the wheel and I'm watching on this dial to show where my angle is landing. So I'm gonna crank this until I get to 35, which I'm at down below. And now I'm going to lock that 35 in. So my angle is set. Now if you look up at the blade from where you're at, you can see that the blade is now actually a little bit lower than we need it to be. So I'm going to crank that up just a hair to compensate for the height that we lost while leaning the blade over. So now I've got my piece cut with a 35 degree angle in it. Inside that is, there is a rail slot on either side of the blade. If the cut is smaller or tighter than the rail slot, we want to use a push stick because it is unsafe to have your hand in this space. If the cut is wider than the slot, it's uh, perfectly acceptable to push the material through with your hand as the support. So I'm going to demonstrate a cut with the push stick and I'm going to demonstrate a cut um, using my hand to push through. <laughs> It is important to consider which notch I'm going to push the material with. So if I was going to be pushing something uh, very narrow through the blade, I would probably use the end. If I'm going to push something a little wider through the material or through the saw and I want to hold it down, I'm going to use this sort of cleat hook on the back. Uh, before cutting, I'm looking at the height of the blade and just making sure that my hand is nowhere near the material. Uh, sometimes when the blade has to be set high, I might hold the push stick a little higher or I'll set back like this so that again, my hand is way far above the material, above the blade as I'm cutting. Whenever you're pushing material through the saw, we want to make an imaginary line in between the blade and the fence, and we want to keep our push stick or keep our pressure on that imaginary line. If I'm too, over, too far over to the side, it can list out. If I'm too far to the inside, I can catch the blade. Whenever I'm cutting, I want to keep my pushing in the middle of the board that I'm making between the blade and the fence. All right, so now I'm going to demonstrate the use of a table saw sled. First thing you're going to do is lay the slip into the rails on the saw and confirm that it is going to slide smoothly from the start of your cut to the end of your cut. You need to set your blade appropriately for the material you're cutting. Remember, you're losing the thickness of the sled right now, so we need to raise the blade a little higher than we would otherwise. When I go to make my cut, I'm going to Secure the material against the fence, holding it with my hand or with a clamp. I want to make sure that my fingers are nowhere near the central passage of the blade. Then I'm going to hold on to the top of the fence with my left hand. I'm going to turn the saw on. I'm going to guide the, saw, the uh, sled through the material nice and slow. Uh, at the end, I'm going to stop, turn the saw off, wait for the blade to quit moving, and then I'm going to return the sled back to the start position. So whenever I'm cutting a slot, you'll notice that I'm going to go back and forth, back and forth with the sled. I can do that so long as I don't move the piece of material uh, as I'm pulling it back. So I'm going to set it where I want it, make the cut, stop, pull it back, reset it to where I want it, push it through to make the cut, stop, pull it back. So each time I return it, I'm not moving it. I only want to cut as I'm pushing through.
there are different table saw sleds to do different operations. This one is a jig that makes miter cuts at a uh, 45 degree, and this allows us to make picture frames. So I'm going to lay my jig down or my sled. I'm going to hold on to my material, making sure my fingers are nowhere near the slot where the blade travels. I've adjusted my height and raised it up appropriately for this piece of material, and I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of cuts and show how the jig works. <laughs> table saw and making a long straight cut, I'm pushing down with my finger and pushing over against the fence. If you find yourself in a situation where you need a high degree of precision or you simply need some assistance doing that action of pushing against the fence, we have this tool called a feather board. The feather board should be inserted in this orientation so that my material pushes through but there's some resistance keeping it from going backwards. So I'm going to lay my piece of material down I'm gonna press the feather board against it, and I'm gonna turn the magnetic switches 90 degrees to the right to lock them in. Now there's tension on this board, and it's being held against the fence. So I'm going to make my cut. I'm going to continue to use my left hand and guide it through. As I'm pushing, the feather board will be assisting and pushing to the right, and I'm gonna use a push stick to keep downward pressure and carry the cut all the way through. Alright, so now I'm going to demonstrate cutting this large sheet of uh, cardboard on the table saw. We're going to use this as an analog for a sheet of plywood, just for our demonstration. So when I'm cutting this large sheet, I want to be thinking about how it is supported best on the top surface of the table saw. From what you can see uh, in this setup, I've got most of the material on the top of the table saw. The majority of the weight of the sheet is supported by the saw, and I don't have a lot hanging on it. You don't want to find yourself in a situation where there's a lot of material hanging off the edge and the board wants to tip away from the saw. So just think ahead when you're setting up your cut. So for this cut, I'm focused on making sure the material is pressed against the fence uh, securely for the entire duration of the cut. I don't want to lift either direction because I can get bound up in the cut. So in this setup, my left hand is forward and it is focused on pushing against the fence. My right hand is at the rear and is focused on supporting the material and sliding it straight forward through the cut. As I make the cut, I'm going to walk my body forward, buzz, 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 cut, cut, cut. You'll notice I'm shifting around the back side of the material, holding onto it the entire time. And in the final component of the cut I'm pushing through and my right hand is directly between the blade and the fence supporting the material that I am uh, cutting and I'm going to carry through and push through on the cut. So I'm going to demonstrate this physically now. I'm going to turn the saw on, set up, and then make the cut. <laughs> This may sound counterintuitive, but when I'm making a really long cut, I'm focused entirely, all of my attention is focused on this gap in the fence, making sure that the, the piece being cut is perfectly pressed up against the fence. I don't even look at the blade, to be completely honest. I'm only focused on this because that is where the danger and um, the mistakes are made in, in making a cut like this. So the most common mistakes we see with the table saw are using pieces of material that are far too short to be safely pushed through the saw and supported the entire length. A piece that's two inches or three inches or six inches is definitely too short. We want uh, to have our boards be a minimum of 10 inches long on the long side to cut safely on the table saw. So that means you have to plan ahead when you make your cuts. So for example, if I need uh, cuts along the lines that you see here, I would actually want to cut lengthwise along the table saw, ripping this board first, and then go over to another saw and segment out these smaller pieces. If I were to cut these segments first and then come back and try and cut them on the table saw, they would be too short and unsafe. Um, so be sure you're using the appropriate length of material when you're trying to cut on the table saw. Thanks for watching this video on how to use a table saw. When you come in the shop to work, make sure that you have a technician to guide you through the process, your first and second time using the saw. We wanna make sure that you've uh, learned all the techniques and that you can safely use the equipment without causing harm to yourself or anyone else. Thanks.